Miranda is with us. Laptop from Hell is her book. New York Post columnist. Miranda, tell us what the biggest thing for you from the revelations from the Oversight Committee about the Biden crime family. What's new? What's important? Hey, hello. How are you guys? Um, I, I just find it astonishing and frightening, really, that this uh, document that Chuck Grasley released yesterday um, has been buried by the FBI. You know, the the story of corruption with the the Biden family, I guess, is something, the influence peddling that's gone on in Washington, D.C. on both sides for a long time. And that's bad, and the Bidens have taken in millions of dollars from around the world. But the cover-up is something else. You know, it's bigger than Watergate, I think. And the fact that you have the FBI um, seemingly involved, the DOJ, all these whistleblowers that are coming out um, are showing us the extent to which um, these institutions covered up for Joe Biden um, in a way that never happens with anyone else. Um, and also remember the CIA was involved with that um, dirty 51 letter pretending that the laptop and our stories about it were Russian disinformation. Um, and, you know, that that was five of the top former CIA directors, and also it looked as if uh, we find out recently that there was um, at least one CIA employee who was involved in soliciting signatures. So I, in, just as with Watergate, I think the cover-up is even bigger than the crime. No, no doubt. And, and I just want to hammer home what revelations we got in short order in the last 48 hours. We got Miranda, for the first time I've seen, you tell me if I'm wrong, an FBI agent under oath acknowledging that they knew the Hunter Biden laptop was real uh, at the time that the New York Post story came out and that they declined to tell. They told Twitter and then said no comment, and they declined to tell Facebook and other entities uh, that they knew the laptop, the FBI did, knew the laptop was real. They, they then allowed the 51 intelligence agents uh, letter to come out. Uh, we also found out that there was a very credible allegation that Joe and Hunter Biden had each been paid $5 million for Burisma to, in, among other things, help a prosecutor get fired in Ukraine. And then we also have Joe Biden on video bragging in 2018 about getting a Ukrainian prosecutor fired or he wouldn't allow them to get a billion-dollar debt uh, policy in place. And on top of all that, we also had the double IRS whistleblowers saying that they weren't allowed to do their entire job against uh, Joe Biden. Miranda, any one of those three would have been considered, I think, fairly a blockbuster re revelation. They all landed in the last 48 hours. And to your point, the New York Times, the Washington Post, MSNBC and CNN are mostly choosing not to cover it. That's right. The IRS whistleblowers, they barely covered, but only to run the Democrat line that these guys are so-called whistleblowers and it's just a misunderstanding between investigators and prosecutors, which is very common, happens all the time. And these guys are just disgruntled. So they, they only covered that to um, bury it. And, and as far as the revelations that you just said, bombshell from Chuck Grasley yesterday, this FD-1023 document, um, which is basically a confidential human source, trusted, credible, 10-year source of the FBI who is paid by the FBI, is talking to the owner of Burisma, a guy called Zlachevsky, who was a buddy of Hunter Biden, who was paying Hunter Biden a million dollars a year to sit on the board at the time that he was a crackhead, uh, and who went went hunting and fishing with um, with Hunter Biden at his uh, Norwegian hideaway. Um, this is the guy who is saying to the confidential human source that I have paid off the two Bidens, uh, five million each. Um, I was forced to do that. I had to put Hunter, um, you know, bring him into the company. Joe asked me to do that. Um, and in return, uh, he was going to fire the prosecutor, Victor Shokin, who is the same prosecutor as he said that in 2018, Joe Biden is there on video, on stage, boasting that he uh, fired. And yet only last week, we had the Washington Post come out yet again with a fact check saying... 
oh, no, it's not true that the prosecutor was investigating Barisla at the time he was fired. He was fired because he was corrupt. Victor Shokin was pursuing an aggressive investigation of Barisma, that on the record, and he had just issued a warrant to seize all the property of Zlachevsky, the guy who says that he was paying bribes to the Bidens. Um, and a month later, Joe Biden gets him fired. And the proof of the pudding is the fact that the replacement prosecutor didn't do anything, didn't pursue any investigations against this corrupt energy company or its owner, Zlachevsky. He got off scot-free. Um, so the firing of Shokin worked for him. Miranda, at this point, and we're speaking Miranda Devine. Her book is Laptop from Hell. You should all check it out. Um, what are we What are we still trying to find out? I mean, it, it does feel like we know more than enough to know what happened here. Uh, is it just in your mind now a question of tracking down? It always feels like there's more money than what has been officially accounted for here, at least in the reporting. Is that... Uh, is that the big the big question here? I mean, is it is it tying Joe Biden himself to these ill gotten gains? What are you looking at for for the next phase of this story? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that the um, focus has been by the Republicans and certainly by us at the Post um, has been on Joe Biden and his connection. Uh, clearly, he's lied to the American people when he said he didn't know anything about Hunter Biden's overseas business dealings. And uh, and so uh, I think one of the, the, the next stages is going to be Devin Archer, who is Hunter Biden's former business partner, who's heading to jail um, and really has nothing to lose. He's uh, going to be testifying. He was supposed to be testifying on Monday. That's um, mysteriously been changed. Um, they're, they're waiting for some documents um, uh, I think to become available, but that he'll be on next week at some point. And he knows about Joe Biden's involvement in particular. He was involved in this Ukraine, uh, the entire Ukraine deal. He was on the board of Burisma with Hunter. Hunter described him as his best friend in business. Um, Devin Archer went to the White House and met with Joe Biden uh, shortly before he and Hunter joined the board. Um, and he will be able to tell us, among other things, how Joe Biden um, used to uh, basically tune in. On Hunter would put him on the speakerphone when he was having uh, meetings with um, various prospective clients, just to prove that he could get his, you know, the vice president on the line any time. And so, um, and he, he'll have other things to say. So I think that will be interesting. And then there are other whistleblowers that are, are coming through, and every time. You know, the whistleblowers speak. I think that pricks the conscience of other people in the FBI or in the IRS or in any of these um, agencies who know that there's been a cover-up. And that's how we got this FD-1023 form, uh, because a whistleblower came forward to Chuck Grasley. Otherwise, Christopher Ray would have got away with, he lied to Chuck Grasley and James Comer because he said it didn't even exist. And then finally, when they were dragged kicking and screaming, they um, to, to show the, the document to James Comer in a sort of secure room, they wouldn't hand it over. They redacted so much out of it um, and, and just gratuitous things that just serve to protect the Bidens. For instance, the FBI originally redacted the line where Zlachevsky says how dumb Hunter Biden is. He says he's dumber than his dog. So why would you re re redact that? The, the FBI is saying, oh, it's to protect, uh, you know, sources and methods. It's got nothing to do. They also redacted the, uh, the, the line where it says that Lechevsky was recording uh, Hunter and Joe Biden, 17 recordings that he kept for insurance. Um, and uh, that was taken out as well. Now, I don't know why you would do that um, unless you're just protecting Joe Biden. Last question for you, Miranda, and you've killed it um, reporting this since uh, since October when this first went public, and we've got just a short time here uh, for a response. But over 50 percent of Democrats still believe the Russian disinformation lie associated with the laptop. Um, how frustrating is it to you that this probably is the most successful disinformation campaign in American modern political history 
that the Democrats have been able to pretend that this isn't true and, and that huge majorities of their base still believe it's a total lie. Yeah, it's it's really it's dispiriting, but it's frightening. And uh, it just has exposed that there are half the media and that's the prestige media to about New York Times, Washington Post are in bed with the intelligence agencies, with the deep state with the Democrats, and they are refusing to do their job as journalists. And I don't know how you get the message across to that half of the country that they're being lied to and kept in the dark. Miranda Vine, everybody, check out Laptop from Hell. Miranda, always appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Thanks so much, Clay and Buck.